Uh, my name is Philip Tostegen, and I'm here today to present my PhD dissertation titled Exploration of Music Collections of Audio Embeddings. And it had been done in the Music Technology Group in the Universitat Pompeo Fabra, and it had been uh, funded by the Mid Frontiers Project. So, uh, today's presentation uh, this is the index. I would go through the introduction first, and then I would uh, talk about auto tagging, particularly about the data sets and architectures. Then I would skip the chapter from my thesis, which is titled Music Similarity in the Interest of Time. But then I will talk about the exploration interfaces, and then I'll do summary and conclusions. And whenever you see the star on the slides, it means that those are the original contributions of my work. So uh, let's start with the introduction. What do we mean by the exploration? What do we mean by the music collections and so forth? As you probably know, in the last decade or so, uh, music streaming had been uh, gaining a lot of popularity. And right now, this is the primary medium of consumption for the music, as you can see from this graph of the revenue between all of the different mediums of music. And uh, apart from just consuming music, uh, because all of the music is available in the music streaming services, and usually it is on the subscription-based uh, kind of financial model, Usually users have access to all of the music and then can listen to whatever they want. So for example, you can see here on the example of the Spotify, which is one of the music platforms. Uh, on your homepage, you can see a lot of recommendations to you, like what music to listen. They are like top recommendations for you, like new releases for you and so forth. And there are a lot of uh, music that is suggested to you based on something, some particular artist that you are listening to or similar to particular artists and so forth. Obviously, users can uh, either like add particular tracks, albums, or playlists to their kind of personal collections by either liking them or following artists and so forth. And it is possible to go to your personal collection in the streaming services, either like navigating artists, playlist albums, and so forth. And uh, users get sorted either by recently added or alphabetical, but uh, it is uh, usually you can also just like look search for some particular album or artist that you want to listen to without going to your personal collection and just listen to it because everything is available. And uh, while uh, it is very easy to listen to a lot of music, uh, if you want to find something new, uh, it is also possible and streaming services provide a lot of ways to discover and explore music, particularly by browsing or navigating like many different playlists or many different artists that might be recommended from particular uh, clusters like that are based on the moods or genres. You can see here like Latin hip hop or like mood chill or something that is more ambiguous like discover or made for you and so forth. Uh, and those uh, discovery options require a lot of effort uh, from the users because you need to do a lot of digging into what you want to listen to and you need to decide on that. And uh, what I want to present here is that the recommendation systems usually also work on this kind of dichotomy between the exploitation and exploration, which comes from the game theory. So uh, from one side, exploitation is when the uh, recommendation systems would try to recommend some uh, tracks or music uh, which uh, would, would have a high probability of users liking it, uh, which is based on the preferences of user and uh, obviously it is a very safe bet and it contributes a lot of user attention because they would keep listening and keep listening and keep listening to the music that is being recommended. But it, it also kind of passive from the user perspective because they don't need to provide much input. It can be, uh, yeah, yes. And uh, it also contributes a lot to the short term reward because uh, it is just like immediate uh, recommendation and it is quite, uh, quite lean out from the user perspective. And from the other side of this spectrum, you have the exploration uh, paradigm where the music recommendation systems would try to recommend something that it is quite far away from the user preferences and doesn't have like a sure hit to be liked by user. Obviously it is much more risky and it is much more lean in from the user's perspective uh, because it requires a bit of effort to try to either decide if users like it or not, but it has a potential to contribute to long term reward because if users would find something completely new, like completely new genre or completely new artist that they would like, they would have a lot of content to listen to for quite a long time. 
And, and yeah, uh, the industry focuses a lot on the improving the exploitation because it is easy to measure and it is easy to improve. And also the trade-off between the exploitation and exploration, how much time is spent on those. And uh, exploration is a bit less uh, exp explored and uh, in, uh, there is much less research on this topic. So that's why we want to focus on this. Uh, there are a lot of also third party exploration websites uh, where the purpose is just like to show like different genres, how they evolve throughout the time, how they connect and so forth. So one of the earliest one is the Ishkur's Guide to Electronic Music and the users can just explore this 2D plane with a lot of genres and try to listen to some music, try to find something new and so forth. And one another topic that I want to talk about is the concept of personal collections, because in the current era of the streaming services, the uh, personal collections are disincentivized quite a lot, because as I told you have everything available and it uh, it, it requires a bit more effort to go through your personal collection if you want to listen to something that you know that you want to listen to. But in the case of, like, for example, rediscovery, if you don't know what, what to listen to, but you want to listen to something familiar, you might want to go there. And uh, yeah, as we mentioned, uh, they are usually built by either liked or followed artists, albums, tracks on the streaming services. But on the other uh, platforms, you could, or just with the physical mediums, people still have their personal collections as it is purchased. And actually during the COVID pandemic, uh, the streaming uh, the, the platform uh, Bandcamp has been growing quite a lot because their model is you would actually purchase the particular albums of the artist and you would support artists directly and you would listen to the purchased uh, music without the monthly subscription. And with the live revenue dropping quite a lot during the pandemic, it was one of the main, well, not main, but uh, it was one of the considerable sources of the income and uh, Bandcamp has been facilitating this way to get some revenue for the artist quite a lot. And actually recently it was acquired by Epic Games, which potentially means that this alternative um, paradigm of uh, purchasing music instead of the having everything uh, available, which was uh, existing quite a long time before streaming became big, uh, might have a future. Uh, so, in the context of this thesis, we were quite interested in to, uh, to see how people consume music and stream music and do the exploration and discovery and rediscovery of their own personal collections in the context of this thesis. So, uh, we did a survey of listening habits uh, of the users. Sorry, sorry, Philip, Philip, I I'm going to have to stop you right here. Just one second. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I wanted to, to remind everybody to please uh, keep your mic uh, shut off. Uh, thank you. I'm sorry, Philip. Go ahead. I, I meant everybody but you, Philip. You're, you're, you're on mute, I think. Hello. Hmm. Okay, sorry for the technical difficulties. The zoom from the uh, from the room was muted. <laughs> okay, sorry. You can okay. hear me now, right? Yes, yes, it's perfect. Okay. Sorry about the uh, the uh, intrusion. Thank you very much. So I'll continue. Uh, so yeah, we we performed a survey of listening habits, uh, which was uh, uh, shared in the mailing list and uh, uh, platforms such as Reddit and Twitter. And we asked some questions about music consumption in, to, in the context of the streaming services and whatnot. And we you can see on this slide some of the statistics of the people that we have <laughs> Uh, questioned uh, with the form and the, we had 319 participants in total and you can see the distribution of the different countries so it is a, we have a, quite a bit of bias towards English-speaking countries obviously 
And uh, we asked a lot of questions, uh, but one of the questions that I want to highlight in the context of this presentation, so these questions had, uh, were, the answers were five point Likert scale from the strongly disagree to strongly agree. And when we asked if there are many options for music exploration and discovery, a lot of people have answered positively. But for the question, if they are satisfied with the options for music exploration and discovery that, that, that are available, uh, the amount of people that were strongly agreeing or agreeing has been decreasing towards the disagreeing and strongly disagreeing. And uh, so there is kind of a potential here. And another question that I want to highlight here, uh, the bottom one uh, is, if it is easy for people to get an overview and manage their libraries, and you can see that a lot of participants uh, have, uh, it has like the lowest agreement rate for comparing to other questions. So there is definitely some kind of an uh, opportunity for improvement here. So that's what we call uh, the rediscovery. Uh, in the context of this thesis. And we have also asked questions how often uh, users uh, or people would uh, are usually uh, discovering new music, expo exploring or trying to listen to something new. And here you can see the answers uh, uh, in the frequency. And also compared to the rediscovery, basically when how much, uh, how often people would like to listen to something from their collection that they haven't listened in a while. And you can see that the frequency and the desire of, uh, uh, of discovery is much frequent. But also we were interested how often do uh, people get the desire to rediscover and compared to how often they actually act upon this uh, desire and actually listening to something from their collection. And you can see that the frequency is much higher for the desire, so it drops a bit when we see how often do people actually act upon it. And when we asked for uh, what are the reasons for it, uh, you can see a lot of reasons here with the number of the respondents in the brackets, but the top ones is not being in the proper mood or just forgetting, uh, it is quite common. And uh, also a lot of uh, people have uh, are enjoying discovery more than rediscovery, if they have a choice between those two. And a lot of uh, options uh, we have condensed to this kind of passivity that we mentioned in the beginning when we were talking about exploration and uh, exploitation. So ex where exploitation is much more passive in this regard. So remember uh, the first uh, topic that is like not being in proper mood, we would come to this later. So another question that we asked was, which terms uh, do people usually use uh, either for search for particular playlists, so like when they know what, what they're looking for, so not discovery or exploration, compared to when they actually don't have a clear idea and they would like to discover or explore music. And you can see here that, that on the first place uh, genre or style is and then on the second place there is mood theme and then uh, the rating uh, the ranking of the other terms such as instrument decade metadata and culture location is a bit different between those uh, two uh, contexts uh, so, because these terms are quite useful for the people to do the exploration and discovery, uh, in the, we want to uh, address the question of the exploration from the perspective of the auto-tagging systems. Because auto-tagging systems can take audio as an input and basically predict uh, tags or um, output the confidence values if particular tag is quite relevant to this audio or not. And uh, the idea, uh, the motivation for this thesis is trying to use this technology of auto-tagging systems to try to improve uh, the exploration and uh, discovery in the context of the rediscovery. So these are the two research questions that we ask in this thesis. First one is, can auto-tagging systems learn music representations that would be useful for music exploration and rediscovery? And the second question is, if uh, these representations can help visualize the music in the way that can be beneficial for user to explore and rediscover mm -hmm. music. Okay, so uh, in this section of presentation, I'll go through auto tagging and uh, in particular from the perspective of the data sets and architectures and uh, yeah. 
So uh, there are a lot of uh, open uh, data, uh, auto tagging data sets, but the common problem with the open MIR data sets is the ability to share audio. And because of the copyright reasons, it is quite difficult. So for example, for the biggest uh, auto tagging data set that had been quite a while in MIR, million song data set, it has half a million tracks that are uh, tagged, but uh, the audio is not freely available. And other data sets such as Magna Targa Tune, for example, they are only 25,000 tracks and they have audio, but the quality of audio is quite poor uh, in this regard. And uh, one of the data sets, which is Freezing Music Archive, which uh, goes uh, around this problem by using the Creative Commons licensed audio. But the problem is that like the quality of audio is quite non-uniform in this regard. So uh, we decided to introduce a new auto-tagging data set called MTG Jamando. And uh, here on this uh, table, you can see also some data sets that have been introduced after MTG Jamando, which are Music for All and Melon data set. And uh, Jamando is the second event and is uh, for this uh, particular PhD in the context of the Mid, Frontier, uh, Mid Frontiers program. And uh, uh, I have spent three uh, months there to do internship. And uh, they are partner uh, in this PhD and uh, they are also interested in the recommendation systems, in particular in the exploration of, uh, of music. So what is Jamando? Jamando is the platform uh, where there is a lot of uh, artists can upload their music and uh, it is also uh, uh, list, uh, the streaming service, uh, so it is completely free streaming and free download where people can just listen to independent artists. And also they have the Jamendo licensing where uh, the music can be used for audio, or for, for video or for uh, commercial uses, uh, just with the one-time payment and no royalties. Uh, so uh, here is the page of the MTG Gemando dataset, and it is a new open dataset for music auto tagging that was introduced in the context of this thesis. So all of the music in the MTG Gemando is Creative Commons, so it can be shared with no problem. And in fact, there is over 500 gigabytes of audio uh, compressed with the MP3. And we also provide spectrograms and Essentia features. Uh, that people can download freely. And uh, the tags that are available in this data set are separated in three categories, genre, instrument, and mood theme. And you can see some statistics of number of tags and number of tracks and so forth uh, that are tagged uh, with those uh, categories. And uh, we have done a lot of pre-processing of the tags because there, were, there was quite a bit of noise in the text. For example, you can see there were both tags like rock pop or pop rock and a lot of, uh, because tags are artists provided while uh, Gemando is still uh, curating the tags. Uh, we did a lot of uh, merging of, of the tags uh, to, to basically to reduce this uh, noise in the tags, which is actually present quite a bit in the Magna Targa Tune and Million Song data set that are folksonomy based. And uh, we also provide the standardized uh, five splits uh, for into training, validation, and test uh, subsets, and five different ways to split this data set for to do the five-fold cross-validation and uh, the code for the baseline, which was implemented by Mins. Uh, one and uh, all of the code of the uh, pre-processing uh, anal anal analysis and uh, calculation of statistics and generation of the figures, uh, I did that and all of its uh, code is available on the GitHub. So uh, there are some more numbers here. Uh, you can see that actually in the, uh, the original uh, paper was in uh, 2019, but the same approach was re-implemented by me with the modern Python and in the PyTorch Lightning and uh, the baseline. And the baseline, we use uh, the fully convolutional network from Choi et al from 2016, slightly modified. And here you can see a bit of the numbers of the, of, of the performance of this baseline model. And and also you can see the histogram of the top 20 tags per category, which is genre, instrument, and moods. And you can see that the data set is quite unbalanced. For example, for genre, you can see the electronic tag is way, way overrepresented comparing to the next ones, which is like soundtrack or pop and so forth. Uh, so uh, now let's talk about architectures and algorithms. Uh, in 2020, there was quite an extensive study performed by Mins1. Uh, to analyze the state-of-the-art architectures in the multiple data sets, particularly also including MTG Gemendo. 
And uh, we are interested in using some of these architectures for the purpose of uh, learning representations uh, for music exploration and discovery. And one of the, uh, well, there is not a lot of uh, variance between the different uh, high performing architectures. The high performing architect architecture for the MTG Jamendo is so called short chunk CNN, also called a VGG or VGG ish. And uh, we are interested in that one because it is the highest performing one. But there is also the architecture, which is a musician, which is from Pons et al., uh, which differs from uh, all of the other architecture in the way that it takes advantage of the uh, audio domain uh, and introduces vertical and horizontal filters that are supposed to capture the timbral and temporal characteristics of the audio, unlike the VGG, which comes directly from the image uh, processing. And another advantage in using those uh, architectures is that uh, they are available uh, in Essentia library as they are pre-trained on the million Song data set and Magna Carta tune, so it is uh, a very good choice from the reprodu reproducibility uh, perspective. And uh, another architecture that we are interested in is VGG, -ish, which is the original implementation of the VGG, uh, which is trained on the audio, not music, on the audio set, which is coming from Google. And it only provides the embeddings. Uh, so, uh, remember when we mentioned before that apart from the genre, uh, moods and themes are quite useful for the exploration, particularly for the rediscovery. Uh, you can see here that in the, uh, the baseline evaluation of MTG Gemendo, the performance of mood theme is one of the lowest ones. So, uh, we uh, hypothesized that those tags are quite uh, challenging. That's why we decided to introduce a challenge and to try to invite teams to try to advance the state of the art in auto tagging, particularly for the mood themes, and try to promote MTG Jamando uh, to be used as the benchmark for this kind of task. So we decided to organize the challenge in, within the context of MediaVal. What is MediaVal? MediaVal is the benchmarking initiative dedicated to evaluating new algorithms for multimedia analysis, retrieval, and exploration. So there are a lot of different challenges which are tackle different uh, modalities, including video, uh, image, uh, text, and so forth. So we decided to organize our challenge in the context of MediaVal, and it, what was, it was one of the few ones which was working with the uh, music, with the audio. So the goal of this challenge was to invite teams to try their approaches to auto-tagging and the data that we are providing, uh, which is all in open access, is the MTG Gemendo data set, particularly is the mood theme subset, only the audio that is tagged with the mood theme tags, and the split zero uh, just to in in increase the uh, benchmarking uh, power of this challenge. And we allow teams to use the external data to pre-train their models, but we also ask them to provide uh, their performance on the just trained on, on the MTG Mendo data set. And we use uh, PR AUK, which is the area under precision recall curve uh, as the prim primary evaluation metric. Uh, the reason of not using ROC AUK is that for the imbalanced data sets, ROC AUK might be a bit over optimistic. So uh, as has been uh, shown in the literature before. Uh, so uh, here you can see a bit of the statistics. Uh, this challenge has been organized for three years from 2019 to 2021. And uh, we had in total uh, um, uh, more than well 18 teams that are, have submitted results uh, through these uh, three years. And on the bottom here, you can see the tags that the teams were trying to predict. Uh, all of them actually, as they are sorted uh, on, from left to right according to the number of uh, tracks uh, in the training data set. So for example, the happy tag has like 1,657 tracks uh, to train with and the lowest ones fast is like has only 100 tracks. So you see that the data set is quite imbalanced and uh, there was a lot of uh, different approaches that teams tried to tackle this uh, problem. So uh, here I would just like highlight some of the uh, approaches, particularly the top performing ones throughout the three years of this challenge. So while the baseline as it was implemented in 2019 has the PRL performance of 0.10 and the approach is just like the VGG um, uh, architecture. 
In 2019, uh, the best performing team have used ResNet, uh, particularly with the frequency aware uh, units and uh, shake shake regularization, and they have uh, managed to achieve 0.15 for the PR AUK, uh, the score. And in 2020, that score has been beaten by another team which used the baseline architecture, which is VGG, but uh, where they have also used additional data to pre-train their model, particularly MSD and Music for All datasets. And one of the big contributions uh, from that team was that they have tried different losses to try to combat the uh, the to try to combat. Um, uh, uh, Try to come with the, the, the problems with the data set, particularly the focal loss, uh, class based uh, and uh, class distributed losses. And they have trained their models with these different losses and they tried to ensemble them to, and, and they managed to achieve quite a high score. And you can see for that for, from 2021, uh, the, the team have also been using the uh, VGG like uh, architecture, which was a bit modified, and they have tried different laws, which was a weighted loss and also frequency dependent convolutions. While they didn't manage to beat the previous uh, year score, uh, there was a lot of insights from a lot of different uh, teams. And if you want to see like much more details of all of the teams, these are the URLs that you can go and see uh, the, all of the results. One of the interesting questions that we wanted to ask is if different architectures would try to, would give different uh, performance uh, for the different tags, if some tags would be easier or more difficult for different architectures. And on this graph, uh, you can see all of the tags uh, on the bottom uh, on the X axis uh, as they are sorted from the according to number of uh, training data uh, from uh, from left to right so the left most happy energetic uh, the ones uh, are the ones that have the most training data and on y axis are all of the different submissions uh, from the teams uh, sorted from the uh, submissions that have the highest uh, average performance on top and the lowest average performance on bottom. And you can see that overall, while there is some difference between the tags uh, according to the different architectures, uh, there are some tags that are quite uh, well uh, predicted, uh, for example, that are highlighted in the red here, for example, deep, corporate, summer, children and trailer. And uh, upon further inspection, uh, we have found out that the deep tag actually uh, refers to deep house music, which also reduces the task a bit towards the genre prediction. And uh, you, as you saw before, the, uh, the performance is usually higher for the genre prediction. So the task might have been easier in this regard basically from the timbral uh, perspective. And the summer tag is quite strongly correlated with the deep tag as they are used quite often together. So those are the reasons that those tags are quite well predicted. But for other tags, like for example, corporate, children or trailer, those music you can imagine how it would sound like for example the corporate music that is like used in the in the videos that are shown to the employees uh, or like the music is for children or the music is used for the trailer so that might be the reason that those tags are quite well predicted here but you can see also that some tags that have quite a bit of data to train are quite uh, poorly predicted, for example, uplifting background or soundscape, which are highlighted in purple. And it makes sense because those tags are quite ambiguous and it would be difficult to imagine the music that uh, just like from this tag, like what is uplifting music. There is a lot of different uplifting music that you can uh, imagine. So the systems had a bit of trouble trying to predict those tags. The interactive uh, version of this, uh, of this chart is available on the following URL. So the summaries and takeaways from organizing this challenge is that uh, I have been organizing it from uh, co-organizing it for 2019, 2020, and doing the full organization in 2021. And I performed this failure and meta study. And uh, the summary and takeaways are that uh, are mentioned here on the slide. So obviously, external data helps uh, to pre-train your model because there is not a lot of data on the data set that we provide. <laughs> And assembling of the loss functions also helps quite a bit, uh, as we saw in the from the team in 2020. 
And uh, some teams have also tried uh, reducing multi-labels to single labels, which reduces the multi-label prediction to single label prediction, which helps uh, to improve the performance also while reducing a bit of the uh, fidelity. And uh, some teams have also tried to in, in, uh, incorporate additional information, such as a tonal information in, uh, in an example of HPCP, uh, try to add it to the male spectrograms that uh, were usually used uh, to be trained. Some other teams have been also trying to reduce the complexity of the models while maintaining the same uh, performance. Uh, and uh, there was quite a, uh, a good uh, contribution in that regard. But uh, the task is challenging, and we might admit that we might have hit the glass ceiling with this uh, task because of the data set. But the takeaway in the terms of rediscovery and exploration is that simple architectures actually perform quite well. So we don't need to uh, go and uh, investigate much more complex architectures uh, for this topic. So, uh, so that is the end of the auto tagging chapter, and now we, let's talk about exploration interfaces and uh, how they were uh, presented in the MIR. So there is a lot of uh, research uh, for multiple decades about the exploration interfaces. You can see some of the examples on this slide, and the basic idea of all of those exploration interfaces is to present music collection uh, in some kind of like 2D or 3D space uh, with the mm, uh, music represented by dots or so forth and with the users being able to interact with the space to listen to music, to see the similar music grouped together and less similar music being away and maybe using some kind of like gradients that are based on moods, genres or so forth to uh, group music and allow users to just interact with these interfaces and explore and find some interesting music or relationships between the different music. Uh, one of the uh, problem uh, with a lot of research that has been done in, in the exploration interfaces that not all of the papers are performing the user-centric evaluation, which we want to focus on the, in this thesis. And among those that actually perform the user studies and user-centric evaluation, even less uh, papers uh, are considering uh, the personal collections of users. So usually it might be just like some kind of data set that is uh, presented to users and they would listen to it and try to um, investigate it. But uh, from uh, per the personal collection, because we want to focus on the rediscovery in particular, as we have identified from the first survey, uh, we want to focus on the personal collections. And you can see that there are only two studies here, and both of them have only been using like eight uh, users for their evaluation. So uh, this is the interface that we propose uh, as the first iteration of this interface, the prototype. And uh, the idea is that uh, you can see music visualized here on the graph with the dots. And each dot is the segment, uh, represents the segments of, segment of music. Uh, the length of the segment is uh, directly related to the perceptual uh, input of the, of the model. Uh, which is three seconds for musician and VGG, and one second for approximately one second for VGG ish. And uh, the users could, uh, when they hover or click on those dots, uh, they would be able to hear that particular segments of audio. And uh, there is uh, users would be able to select how much, how many tracks they want to visualize, and if they want to visualize segments as they are here or do they want to visualize trajectories, uh, which are the segments connected with the line according to the temporal evolution of the song. And, uh, or they want to visualize averages, which are the segments uh, averaged together into one circle with the radius representing the standard deviation of all of the multiple segments in the track. And uh, users could also select if they want to visualize uh, embeddings or tagrams. Uh, tagrams are the activation values of the uh, output layer of the neural networks, and embeddings are the activation values of the penultimate layer of the neural networks. And for example, for the tagrams, uh, users would be able to select 
uh, particular tags that they want to visualize on the X and Y axis. So in this example, you can see that the electronic tag and metal tag are being visualized. So if you would go to uh, top right corner, basically would try to find uh, music that is tagged, uh, with, uh, which the model is predicting uh, to be both electronic and metal. So try to find some music on the intersection or genres. But also in the in terms uh, in the way that if you want, don't want to visualize particular things for x and y axis, we provide the option of just using the dimensionality reduction techniques such as PCA or TSNA, just like to visualize all of the space in the 2D plane. And yeah, all of the code is available on the GitHub for this interface. And apart from, uh, it, it was presented in the machine learning for music discovery workshop in the ICML. And apart from just using this interface for exploration, uh, it is what is just like a prototype. Uh, this uh, prototype can also be useful quite a bit for the quality evaluation for the uh, deep learning models. For example, you can see here, and the models, uh, well, if, uh, for example, for the Magna Paga tune, uh, the, there are two tags, which are basically meaning the, the have the same semantics, female vocalist and female vocalists, it was the plural. And obviously, if we put both of those tags on X and Y axis, you would see quite a good correlation between those. And uh, on the other example, if you would put like no vocals and vocal on the X and Y axis, uh, it is kind of, it represents quite a bit of the anti correlation, but it is also quite interesting to listen to the examples which are either in the uh, bottom left corner or on the top right corner, which means that the model either predicts uh, doesn't predict either of those tags or predicts both of those tags with the high probability and see what kind of music the pro, the uh, the model might have uh, troubles. And uh, on the poem for further inspection, those are usually some kind of like vocoder-like music, which uh, the models might have uh, interesting predictions for. And uh, in the case of trajectories, uh, you can see here the example, if we just visualize some uh, like a uh, uh, little number of tracks, uh, for example, uh, and you can see how the, you can uh, get a bit of insight on uh, the evolution of the song and the structure of the song. So for example, if you, uh, obviously, obviously it is much better visualized with the TSNA because PCA is quite noisy in this regard. And you can see here, like for example, two cyan clusters with the, a lot of uh, connections between them upon further inspection. Uh, those are uh, basically vocal parts of the song and the instrumental parts of the song. And when the vocal starts, basically there is a connection between those two clusters. So it is quite interesting to explore and uh, see uh, the semantics of, of those uh, basically of the representations that are learned from the, by the auto-tagging models. So uh, this system uh, is uh, built with uh, primarily with the Flask uh, technology. And you can see here that for the audio processing, uh, we are using Essentia, as I mentioned before. Uh, and we analyze all of the audio with Essentia. And then uh, we store the metadata in the SQLite database and all of the embeddings with the, as the NumPy files. And then for the actual interaction of the system, uh, we use the front end, which, is, uh, which was wrote, uh, written in the uh, Twitter bootstrap and we're using Plotly for most of the, uh, most of the visualization as you see here. So uh, after the first iteration, uh, as we want to do a bit more of the evaluation of this interface with the users as with the interviews, uh, this is the second iteration of the web interface as it is uh, built to evaluating the personal collections. And uh, you see here that uh, so from some of the feedback from the presentation of the first interface was that if we want to uh, maybe compare different latent spaces in the regard to see if they, one of the latent space is better or worse for music exploration and discovery. So in this interface, we put, it is possible to visualize two spaces at the same time, basically on the left and on the right. And we have anonymized all of the names of the architecture data set layer and projection for users to uh, select them and not be biased by the names. So the users can, uh, uh, after the, uh, all of, the, of their music is analyzed, uh, they can select tags uh, or artists 
uh, that they want to visualize at the same time. Uh, they can also visualize all of their collections, but then they can use the reduction slider basically to visualize less segments per track. Uh, so the value of two, for example, would mean that the number of the segments visualized per track would be cut in half and so forth. So basically every second or every third one. And uh, you can see here that some segments, some dots are in red. It, uh, we provide the functionality to highlight particular tag or artist or album or track to see where it is in the big picture of the latent space uh, and it will be highlighted in red. And obviously, users would be able to listen to music, uh, which is by either hovering or uh, clicking on individual dots, which are representing the segments. And uh, you can see here that like uh, you can also select some uh, dots here. For example, you see that the ones that are highlighted a bit, uh, but uh, comparing to ones with the lower opacity, are selected. And if you select it on one uh, on one side the same uh, subset would be selected on the other side. So you can see also how well different uh, latent spaces would be grouping uh, or cl uh, different clusters. So now I'll show a bit of the video of this uh, system in action. So let's hope it works. So yeah, here, here you can see how the uh, user is selecting some uh, data sets. Let me know you can hear the sound. So you can see that the users can zoom in. I'm, I'm afraid the sound is not working though, or is it just for me? No, I, no, I think it's working. It, it, is it working now? No. Oh, yeah, yeah, very low. So you can see, uh, you can see here that like yeah, the, it is uh, users can zoom in into particular clusters and see uh, how uh, like different uh, the different artists are close together and if the music is similar or not. And in this particular case, uh, this is my personal collection, which I'm uh, highlighting from the years of like iPods and and so forth. <laughs> So here, like there is a different projection being uh, used. Ah. Sorry. My internet is a bit slow. So here, here you can see how like you can select some uh, some segments. So I'll show a bit of the last part where you can see. 
Ah, that's a bit finicky. So yeah, you can see here, like as like on the other side of this latent space, for example, like there is a lot of like much more like either uh, like uh, acoustic and uh, less uh, aggressive music. So uh, yeah, uh, and for example, here you can see like as uh, my collection is primarily like rock and metal, but there is still a lot of like different tags. Uh, how, for example, that the artist, which is uh, Enya, uh, which is tagged with the new age, which is much more relaxing and much more uh, less aggressive, how it is clustered or well or not well in the different latent spaces. Uh, so you can see here, yeah, basically some examples of also the shape of the latent spaces as it is uh, mm, mm, as it is visualized using the UMAP uh, visualization. So uh, to validate this interface, we have performed a user study uh, and uh, we uh, needed uh, like users to actually have their audio because we needed to process them to, uh, to be able to visualize it with this interface. And we have conducted uh, semi-structured interviews with eight participants. You can see some statistics here uh, for the participants. And we also asked them the same question that we asked of the uh, survey in the very beginning, how often do you feel the desire to listen to something from your collection that you haven't listened in a while basically to ask about the rediscovery and you can see that the responses are quite uh, similar to the ones from the uh, generic public uh, so uh, we asked uh, users to provide us uh, the audio for their personal collections, particular around 1000 tracks. And in reality, it was like from 400 to 1200 tracks. And then we performed a bit of the introduction of the functionalities as I did uh, in this presentation, and then allowed users five to 10 minutes to just get familiar with the interface. And uh, we were monitoring them and uh, encouraging them to try all of the different functionalities. So if they were not using some particular functionality we would encourage them to use it and after they got familiar with the interface we would give them a task uh, imagine that you want to listen to something from your library that you haven't listened in a while explore the system and make a playlist for yourself and then uh, we were uh, observing them how they were interacting with the system and uh, basically by doing the selection and clicking a button like create playlist uh, that was would be the end of this task and the participants took uh, all the way from two minutes to 20 minutes but also some participants after they finished this task they were continuing uh, using uh, uh, using the system to try to create more playlists which we don't count here uh, so uh, we uh, asked some questions after uh, after the task was uh, concluded, uh, also with the answers uh, on the five point Likert scale from the strongly disagree to strongly agree. And you can see here, while the sample size is quite small, uh, you can see that there is a bit of the um, basically high values for uh, questions that are related to the if the participants have discovered unexpected connections or if they have rediscovered something that was a kind of a goal of this interface and also if the users liked interacting with this system. It's also interesting to see that there is quite a big standard deviation uh, for if the users had preference for a particular model or not. 
And but uh, when users were answering the questions, we also were asking them the reasons for particular answers. And uh, it was, there was a lot of insight that we have identified from the interviews with all, all of the participants. And we performed a topic analysis and have identified some topics that have been recurring in all of the uh, our participants. Uh, and they started to repeat like after six participants already. So uh, the first uh, question is uh, the problem of visualizing segments uh, comparing to the full tracks. Obviously, participants said that like three seconds might be too short. And while like particular three seconds of different tracks might be quite similar on the full scale of the tracks, they might be quite different. And they, particularly for if they have a lot of evolution between the genre or, or moods. Uh, but from the other side, if we would average uh, like all the segments into one circle, it would be also difficult to like there would be a lot of reduction of complexity so like while we can see like how diff the structure of the track according to where the it's their segments are it would be just destroyed when we would be averaging them and uh visualizing the whole collections a lot of participants like it because uh you can see here one participant said like here is hard music but if i come here it is much more peaceful and relaxing and there were some this kind of gradients that were identified in the dimensionality reduced space either moving from rock to ambient or electronic to acoustic or vocal to instrumental and uh also the participants uh have uh had very good feedback about the rediscovery part of this interface. One participant said, like, I would never think to put these two artists together in a playlist, but it works quite well for these tracks. And uh, we also asked participants if they preferred particular models that were anonymized, and uh, it was a bit, uh, the results were a bit unconclusive. But you can see here that the VGG uh, was mentioned a bit more than musician. But, and also participants preferred uh, spaces based on the tagrams much more than the medics, which we attribute to uh, obviously tagrams uh, having a bit more uh, semantic uh, meaning uh, for the exploration. And PCA and standard PCA has been quite useful to see like the big picture of the whole latent space. And TSNA and UMAP were quite nice for clustering and for, for participants to zoom in. One participant said that like, it seems that musician Magnetic Tune can separate ambient from drums quite well, while VGG trained on MSD gets the timbral aspects of sounds together well. So there is also value of having two latent spaces together side by side. So uh, I would uh, do the summary and conclusions of this thesis. Uh, so the contributions, uh, we have identified the trends of the music listening uh, through online survey with 319 respondents. And we have identified that there is an opportunity for better exploration, discovery and rediscovery systems and processes. The, we have introduced a new auto-tagging uh, data set, MTG Gemendo, which is quite widely cited right now and has 140 stars on the GitHub. And uh, we have uh, organized and uh, I have performed uh, meta analysis of the uh, emotions and themes in music challenge uh, within the medieval. I have been organizing in, in two, two years and full organization in 2021. Uh, the things that I haven't mentioned in this presentation, but uh, have been also done as the part of the internship with Gemendo and are presented in a document, is that uh, I have also introduced a new data set for collaborative filtering and content-based embeddings for more than 29,000 tracks from Gemendo. Uh, and I have performed the comparative study of collaborative filtering and content-based spaces regarding the nearest neighbor similarity and uh, have identified that the choice of the training data set uh, tends to produce the most dissimilar uh, latent spaces, then followed by the architecture and then followed by the layer producing the most similar ones. I also have performed the evaluation of a selection of dissimilar latent spaces in the context of the music similarity for music recommendation with the online listening test. And we have identified that embeddings work better than the tagrams uh, for just generic music similarity. And uh, we are able to achieve the score three out of four on the Likert scale, which is quite similar uh, for the audio set VGG-ish uh, latent space. 
Uh, I have also performed uh, research and development of the functional prototype for exploration of latent and tag spaces, which uh, also allows for quick qualitative evaluation and sanity check of models exploration with tags. And also uh, the next uh, step was the research of and development of the system for visualization of embeddings for exploration of personal collections, which we have evaluated with the eight interviews, uh, semi-structured interviews, and we have confirmed of value of such interface for for rediscovery and playlist creation. Some of the limitations of the work that is done in this thesis is that MTG Mendo is relatively small comparing to the commercial data sets, uh, which is only 55,000 comparing to multiple millions of data sets. And music is a bit different from the commercial music, for example, from the same um, million song data set, which is much more indie. And the tags are, while they are artist provided and they are cleaned and they are curated by Gemendo, they're still a bit noisy and imbalanced. Also that like we work with commonly used architectures from several years ago, which is Musician and VGG, while they still work well and we have confirmed with the medieval challenge that uh, they still are quite uh, competitive. Uh, there are a lot of newer and better architectures right now, but also they are much more computationally expensive. And uh, we also admit that the quantitative evaluation of, of the interface is quite weak and uh, it was quite difficult to get more participants with the context of the pandemic and so forth. But uh, from the participants that we have interviewed, uh, there was a lot of useful insights and discussions which are quite a big contribution of this work, which is the qualitative analysis. For the future work, as we mentioned, uh, uh, proper evaluation of the exploration uh, is, should be done in the much more long-term studies. And uh, while we needed uh, the participants to provide audio uh, for our system, uh, the ideal way to study this would be integration with the streaming platforms, in particular with the partnership with some streaming platforms, because it would be more difficult to do it without the partnership, and um, would require much more extensive study and uh, much more like habitual use of such kind of interfaces. For the media wall, we have identified that we have had hit glass ceilings and definitely the task needs extension. Possibly we have been thinking about doing the arousal valence regression with mapping of the tags towards the arousal valence space and yeah, for formulating the task as a regression task. And uh, about the latent spaces, uh, there are a lot of like modern uh, architectures and challenges that are aiming to provide the multi-purpose embeddings, which are good for a lot of different MIR tasks, which might be also quite uh, good in the context of the exploration and rediscover. Uh, so these are the publications that have been pro um, have been uh, done in the context of this thesis, and there is a journal paper planned as it is the synthesis uh, for the medieval um, results. And this is the end of the presentation. Uh, so thank you very much.